Hi, this is Nell, illustrator slash animator slash generic creative and a Mexican citizen that gets her brain melted every year as a consequence of global warming, who solves the issue contributing ever further to the problem by jumping on a plane and moving to fresher horizons. I was wondering where to go next this year when, while I'm scrolling, I bump into this quite informative TikTok with fun facts about Howl's Moving Castle, the Miyazaki movie, which is among my favorites because, <laughs> well, of course it is. I found out that the town where Sophie lives was based on a real town in France named Colmar, so I immediately added it to my bucket list and to my immediate travel plans. So yeah, I booked a flight, booked a place to stay and got myself there, not without packing some essentials to do plein air, which I haven't practiced in ages and wanted to for so long, but my ornamental caramid nature prevented me from doing. I have personally never liked to make one-on-one -on -one copies of anything. Whenever I do studies, I prefer to apply what I am seeing to something different. And continuing with this vein, I decided to plein air the location but adding fantasy elements that were not there. So I grabbed my gear and walked towards the city with this mission. Doing plein air in Colmar proved itself to be challenging, given most of the iconic buildings are located in areas surrounded by narrow streets and high pedestrian traffic, where you can't just sit down and draw without becoming an annoying flow blockage. Sure, there are coffee shops where you could sit nearby, but the angle from there wasn't optimal, and considering the level of detail of the architecture in Colmar, and my rusty house being slower than a rheumatoid turtle in slow motion, I assumed the coffee shop owners wouldn't be too happy having me there flattening my butt cheeks for five hours straight, taking the space of fast turnaround paying customers, so I went for places that weren't as flashy but still had the calmer vibe where I could sit down and draw unbothered and without bothering anyone. And I found out quickly this was not an optimal solution either, this time thanks to the elements. The sun hitting the paper and blinding me, the wind blowing my hair all over my face, the rocky stairs pinching me after 20 minutes, the passing buyers being distracting. Turns out, when all your attention gets grabbed by your surroundings, very little goes to your artwork and it shows. So my first attempt was awful and I quickly realized it would take me forever to get a decent piece under these conditions, so I ended up settling for taking pictures of the location and then retreat to the comfort of my Airbnb with proper chairs and a working desk and all the time in the world to complete the scene. After a week of this watercoloring training wheels method, I managed to finish three small paintings, which I then scanned and completed in Adobe Photoshop, given the scale of the painting and the tools I had made it technically impossible to add detail directly on paper by hand. Then, at last, I took this image and ran them through Stable Diffusion Forge to add some extra flair. The method I am going to showcase is a workflow I put together for myself a year ago, which in AI time is kind of like the ages or something, so yeah, no precisely current, but I've stick to it not only because I'm on the move and my travel laptop barely has the specs, but also because, as you probably know, artists at large didn't precisely embrace AI, and as a consequence, the developers of this tech ended up with a limited feedback pool, so they continued customizing it to accommodate the needs and feedback of their users, therefore many of the most recent workflows are not tailored for people with hand-drawn artistic backgrounds. The first thing I do is to reduce the image size to 1024 pixels on the shortest side, then open a brand new blank square document of 1024 by 1024 pixels and drag my piece there. Then I save just that crop part of the canvas in a new image file, which I then upload into the image to image tab from Stable Diffusion using InPaint, which allows me to select a specific area in the image to prompt. Once I have it selected, I write the prompt I need, which in my particular case is quite short, simple and straightforward given the image I painted, which I am not uploading, already has the guidelines of what I want for the end result to look like, so no need to rely on prompt complexity. 
Once my prompt is ready, I take a look at the parameters, which I leave with the default values, with the exception of toggling whole picture to only mask, which is better if you just want to work on a selection, as it is this case, than the output image, which I set to 1000. 1024 by 1024 pixels, the measurement of which stable diffusion works the best, and I increase the batch count to have more image output options. Then we have the noise and strength slider, which controls for how much the image will be changed. A value of zero will retrieve us the exact same image to be uploaded to image to image with no change at all, and a value of one will change it 100%. As you can see, I got this epic sky as a photograph, nothing to do at all with my watercolor sky. Since I'm using an SDXL customized model, I am not using any of the control net parameters. The model itself understands what I need very well with no extra help, but control net can be super helpful for earlier models or when you have a less concrete reference to guide the AI. This time I'm using a denoise strength of 0.35, which keeps the watercolor feel to it while adding texture and detail. I hit generate and wait for the AI to finish. Once the model gives me the output images, I bring them into Photoshop and manually collage them together, taking the best bits of each. Then, once done, I save the image, bring it to stable diffusion, and rinse and repeat with a different area. I keep doing this once and again and again and again until I am done with the whole piece. Then I flattened everything and run a camera raw in Photoshop to improve it. Once done, I save the image, come back to stable diffusion, and this time I go to the top extras, load my finished image there, and upscale it. There are many upscalers to choose from. I previously made tests upscaling an image to see the results each one had to offer and made a mini catalog. Some of them add extra detail, some don't, some you can control how much of the added detail from your main model could be added. This time I chose this particular upscaler since I just want the image to be larger, preserving the watercolor texture it has, and this one was the best for that. Then I hit the generate button and once the AI is finished subscaling the piece, I check the output folder to see the end result. <laughs> Overall, please. Now, I know more than one individual will comment that I could have skipped the AI part altogether and do the manual detailing in Photoshop myself. And yeah, you're not wrong, I could have done that. I could have spent thousands of hours glued to my computer screen during my time in Palmer as opposed to explore the city, eat super pastries, or have a glass of wine and long conversations with amazing people, I guess, but I chose to do the later instead. It is down to what you consider will be the best use of your time at the end, and everybody is free to decide that for themselves. I want to thank Sean for allowing me seeing Colmar from Oop the Rooftops like Sophie did in the movie, and to Mark because without him, none of this will have been possible. Colmar is a beautiful city that smells like flowers and delicious bread, and I will recommend everyone to visit from now on. So that will be it. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.